When I was 12 years old, Halley's Comet last visited. Anybody over the age of 40 would probably remember seeing it as a child. It's the oldest and probably the most famous comet that you can see with the naked eye. If you were a child when it visited last time, you will be in a very fortunate position that you are probably going to see it again in your lifetime. It's one of the the few comets that you can do this with. I remember when this happened, like I said, I was 12, and our family weren't well off. And we went to our neighbor's place to view it one night. You could see it by looking up in the sky. You could see it with the naked eye. But we went to our neighbor's place because they had a pair of binoculars and we used that to get just that little bit closer to see it. It, it was it was something that for me, it, it changed the way I saw the night sky because it was real. All of a sudden, what you could look up and see was real. It wasn't just a movie. May the 4th, Eta Aquatus meteor shower will be at full bloom and you'll be able to see it and capture it with a phone. I'm going to show you how to do it. It's going to shoot about 50 meteors per hour. So just under one a minute. And they're going to shoot at about 66 kilometers per second. That's like 70 times the speed of a regular bullet out of an assault rifle, if you like. These things are gonna go really, really far. Parent body of this meteor shower is in fact Halley's Comet, which is why I'm so keen to shoot this. As Halley Comet orbits the sun, it leaves this stream of debris and dust particles. Here, Earth passes through this debris field late April, early May, to create this meteor shower. Around May the 4th is when this thing will be at its peak and we'll be able to photograph it with our phones. How you find this in the night sky is going to be dependent on where you actually live. There's a couple of apps that you can use. If you're on iOS, I would recommend you get the app called Night Sky. It is a fantastic app to find celestial bodies in the night sky with your phone. It has a good augmented reality, so it'll track it as you move the phone through the sky. It's got a good search uh, field there that you can put in there, the meteor name and or the meteor uh, shower name, and it will find it for you in the night sky. And you can point it, there it is, you're good to go. If you are on an Android phone, I would recommend, highly recommend getting Sky Safari 7. It is a fantastic app for doing basically the same thing. It's got a good search field there that you can enter into what you're looking for and it will point you in the right direction. The good thing about that app is that you can fast forward time or take time back to see where things were a few weeks ago and where things will be next year at this time. It's it's bloody good. The other thing you're going to need is a very dark sky. I talk about this all the time on this channel with all the different photography that we do. You're going to need a very dark sky, which, which is what I have here. You're going to need a tripod, you're going to need a phone holder because what we're going to do here is going to take minutes to hours long to do. Now, because we see about 50 meteors an hour, that's uh, you know, a little bit less than one per minute. So a regular night shot is not going to do. If you have an iPhone, I would strongly suggest using just a regular camera app, taking 30 second photos and having a Lumilapse device connected to it. So it's gonna shoot every 34 seconds and capture images all through the night, put them all together like I've done in tutorials where I've taught you guys this before, then get yourself a wonderfully long, nice time-lapse of meteors going through the night sky. It'll be sensational. If you didn't want to do that, you just wanted a single image, I would do it exactly the same way and then compose those photos, blend those photos in Photoshop later so you've got a stream of meteors going through the night sky. It'll be sensational. If you have a Samsung phone, especially the ultra phones, I wouldn't do it that way at all. I would put it on a tripod, put it on a phone holder and set up my camera or my phone camera to do a hyperlapse using the 300 times so you use best for stars and moving stars and just let it do its own thing to create a star trail or not a star trail to create a time lapse all through the night and it will do it all by itself and the resulting detail will be mint for what we're doing here. Outside of all those, you've probably got, say, let's say the Google Pixel. The Google Pixel is by far the best phone out there, the easiest one to do night sky photography. And because it shoots for four minutes at a time, it's going to capture some meteors in that image all by itself with one shot but it's not gonna capture it all night. You're gonna to need to sit there and hit it a few times while you're out there with it. I will certainly be capturing that meteor shower right here on this channel in our wonderful dark skies that we have here in North Central Victoria, Australia. And if you want to see what I capture, be sure to subscribe and I'll show you what I've got going on in the next week or so. If you do manage to capture these things, we've got an awesome Facebook group over there. I'll link it down the bottom. Head over there and share what you capture. This is going to be a pretty sensational meteor shower. I'd love to see what everyone else is doing. That's it for today, guys. May the 4th be with you and I'll see you next week. Catch ya.